Hello, my name is Kai Helmich and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I work with symbols. Um, our world is so dominated by our left brain hemisphere and now and again we always have to try to balance that or not just now and again but in general to stay in a state of equilibrium of being balanced out between um, the left hand brain and the right hand brain so therefore we need to do more work around symbols we need to do more work around our creative aspects um, connecting to our intuition and from there to our inner wisdom from there into our truth and from there even however you want to call it into that godly source that is there for everybody of us to tap into and I have worked since many years now with the triangle together um, it came out in numerous logos of mine and always I try to incorporate it and now I want to see I will show you and share with you where I have ended up with what the, the triangle, the holy trinity, um, my alchemical process of combining one with another and seeing what happens and unraveling it and going into a process of thinking about it and um, gaining more and more knowledge from within my body where I want to go, what is my truth. Um, and also allowing then that knowledge and that awareness, that consciousness that I have in my own world to ripple out in all aspects of my life. If that is relationship or if that is sexuality, if that is business or any kind of aspect, huh? the work-life balance. And we'll see that immediately how it, it balances it, it's out, how we get into flow, how we work much more efficiently by doing less. And let me tell you about this doing less, this is so important. So we have our triangle here and I would like to describe the bottom part because this is really where it starts. This is where we at the moment are all are and we have to move on from our journey here because there is a lot of suffering in here. This is called the world of duality. Uh, we have two extreme points that working with each other. We have male, female, we have um, or the, the, the male and the female, we have the masculine and the feminine, we have black and white, we have anything that's opposing, right? And they're working together and it's a tug of war, who is winning and the stronger influence, the expanding influence in general, the masculine principle is gaining more and more ground and the feminine pushes further and further back we see this at the moment what happens with the expansive element of fire which is the which is the willpower which is the masculine and it burns down all the trees it burns down all the rainforests our reservoirs our potential our the place of uncertainty we haven't been there we don't know what the tribes are doing there what species are there what can be any healing solutions for us so as we struggle in this world of, the, um, of um, duality, in between the forces, we have, of course, the opposite side is up here. And I would call that, that's oneness. So, or God, right? God is everything. I am God, or I am Jesus Christ, and the Father in heaven is one means nothing else then the whole journey from here to here is a state of mind so i'm here whoever i identify myself with whoever i'm playing out this role in this world between the forces um then i have jesus christ or um my higher self right if i'm my higher self i'm god a son of god and I have resources available, given to me by God. Um, and now we want to see where that is. And this is really important because this is so paradox to our world. Um, as we let go and as we go into our feminine, as we surrender the masculine dominance of the mind, of the willpower, we actually give way for the emotion, for the feminine, for the feeling states to come back in, for the intuition, for the vision. Um, and that connects us. The vision is always connected to the great mystic. 
aspect or God, whatever you want to call it. It's up to you. And there is this clear thing that happens here. In duality, this is where we all struggle and where all the suffering is because it's an excess of masculine energy. Right? This is the masculinity. This is the, the reality focus. This is the kind of the practical um, stuff that has to be done here. How do I deal within the physical laws and so on? And I need to get things done and I need to be doing. And then we have the bridge, the bridge between the mystic, between the oneness part and the, the, the real base duality part. And that's the feminine. And in the feminine, we also have our higher self position. So this is the power. This is really where everything happens. Because as I'm tending to come down here, I'm really going really extreme. I have to be one or the other. I'm in separation. But as I go towards oneness, I need to climb up and I'm coming into a different area. And this area is so important for us because it's an area of more being than doing. It's an area where we work more through our third eye rather than with our mind. That means we don't see and react and see and we want, but we sit and we, we project out um, not our internal stuff that is there, but our internal higher self, the way how we see the world in its greatest glory. We see how everything would work together sustainably not in separation, not in wars, but with nature, um, with our sexuality, with abundance of money and success and love, whatever there is. So that happens up here when we are in being, when we work with the creative powers that are given to us um, instead of here where the doing is. And that being also then allows us to be connected to be closer to the aspect of the divine or of the mystical aspect or of God or however you want to call it. Working with the symbol more and more and more, there is also other things that come into. This is for me the typical triangle that I work with. Yeah? And it really is important. Normally what happens, we would divide God um, matter and then masculine and feminine aspects but now it is different because it is really important to see the feminine as the bridge the bridge to oneness this is where everything is being connected where we can influence everything and where we also go back into the creative aspect to manifest from our highest self so if you're interested to work with that if you like um, what you see as a symbolic meaning to speak a different language that maybe to the mind doesn't make sense but you know somehow do you know what there is something yes it is about the f i have to go into the feminine even if i'm man it is so important that we the man of today that we embrace our feminine side that means the side of more being rather than doing because as we're doing, the feminine on the outside can't rise because we're taking up too much space. But if we also go into an equilibrium and into a balanced environment where we also are in being, then I give the space for myself, but also for the outside world. So within, so without, give that space for it to rise. So, and that is vulnerability. That is surrender. Uh, that is like, wow, becoming still. How terrible is that? And we all have to struggle the same path to surrender our mind, to surrender the masculine side and handing over and allowing to say, I'm trusting you, come through and I know I can serve you, um, whatever will happen. For my life, my life was always terrible in a way when my willpower decided that it needed to use my body to be better, stronger and faster in sports, for example, or in business. But my soul and my, my heart never wanted to go that fast. 
Um, but now where I have a clearer vision, where I have a better connection to my feminine aspect within me and have greater capacities to see the world in a symbolic meanings. Uh, it says in the, in the Bible more or less that God speaks to us through symbols, through stories. So we need to interpret our world twofold. We need to interpret it for what it is. As long as we're abiding by physical laws, we need to also look into those and work with those. But also we need to see that a red car is not just a red car, but what is it meaning actually? There was one very interesting thing that we said is about um, symptom and cause. We're standing and trying to bring healing to ourselves. We're trying to make changes to ourselves. And how do we do that? Huh? We have a, a speedometer in the car, you're driving and it shows you the speed and the speed says like 150 miles an hour, going like the clampers down the road. And what do we do to trying to change this in this aspect? We're taking um, something and we wipe the screen. We wipe the screen to say, look, go down where I'm too fast. I need to break or I need to take the next exit or whatever. So we're scratching and polishing the window um, of the speedometer so that the needle can come down. But no, we need to wake up and beca become conscious, become present of what that actually means. Oh, here's a symptom. I'm seeing and I'm feeling clearly there is a sign I'm much too fast and I need to slow down. So therefore, this is only my projected field this is only um the symptom the cause is somewhere else the cause is down there where the accelerator and the brakes are i'm standing on the accelerator too long too much so the least thing that i can do in this moment of awareness is like oh back off from the accelerator or step on the brakes and regulate the speed again um, whatever you need to get better and easier through life. I always say to people, so how do you get the fastest way around a racetrack? And then the initial answer is like, oh, floor the, the, the throttle, right? Step onto the gas. But the real answer is actually in the way how you use most efficient the accelerator and the brakes. Because on the on these long stretches, you need to go and really accelerate. That's the masculine, that's the... That's the um, the acceleration, and also when the brakes, are, when the when the curves are coming, you need to slow down, you need to brake sometimes quite harshly to get the bend before you then can step alternatively onto the acceleration and, and move out of there and accelerate out of it. So it's all here, but the main thing I need to feel, I need to feel what's going on, um, and. From there, I know also where my high self, this is the, the life of purpose. If I'm doing it by my will, there's no purpose to it. But if I'm doing it because I'm connected to something that tells me that this is what I want to do, that this is what I need to do, then we also have the clear agenda. We have the clear path given to us at least one step at a time um, as we go along so that we can all make it work. If you're interested to work more with symbols um, or seeing what symbols and what stories are coming out in your life that needs to be translated from the left hand hemisphere into the right hand hemisphere then why not give me a call and we work on that together and and help you to improve or and increase your capacity to work with your right hand hemisphere so wishing you well and speak to you soon